Hi everyone, Matt here and welcome to Christine's channel. Welcome back to the shop and our first project with the True Delivery. Today we are working on a tire cart or small pit cart that's going to house all three canopies, a set of tires up here, a set of tires down there, a shelf on this part here where we'll put the small toolbox and have a little shelf to work off of, all on a rolling cart that we can strap down in the new trailer. So to start this project we're going to cut down the aluminum rails which are the 1020 which means one inch by two inch and we're going to cut them down then to 58 inches which is going to be for the side rails we're going to have four of these cut down to 58 inches now we're going to cut the side pieces those are 35 inches which will make the overall cart 37 inches wide because we're going to bolt the side pieces then between the longer rails that we just cut now i cut the side pieces i also cut then two of the pieces for the height they're 26 inches tall that's because the wheels are 24 inches total so they can fit then in between the two racks that this will have now i'm going to cut the pieces that the tires will rest on and two more of the pieces for the are the braces for height now that we have the pieces cut it's time to do the threading then of these holes here so that way they can be bolted then together with the other pieces these will get threaded then one quarter 20 and I'm using quarter 20 because of the fact that the other bolts that would be then used in these slots for different types of fasteners are all quarter 20 also. And to thread these, I'm just using a regular tap. I lubricate with a little WD-40. I like WD-40 to lubricate with because of the spray nozzle. You can then spray down the tap. Also, you can spray then into the opening a little bit to help then get rid of some of the shavings that get clogged up here. Also, because I'm tapping into aluminum, I tap a little bit back it off and break the chip and then tap a little bit more back it back off otherwise it tends to spiral out a fairly large tip which clogs then easier and makes it more likely to gall so i tap a little bit back it off sometimes you get far enough you have to back it all the way out clean off the tap clean out the threads a little bit and keep going okay so we have a problem i got a little greedy and unfortunately you can see right here I broke the tap off as I said I try to go a little bit back it off break the chip go a little bit more back it off and so forth on this one it was actually going very well I almost got it all the way fully seated and it was just going well enough that I thought I'll try to go all the way but I could feel that the tap was getting a little sticky in there a little crunchy and I should have backed it all the way out cleaned off the threads and then went back in and finished but I thought it's about another turn and that's all so it actually backed it off a bit went back in and then got it all the way tapped, but then as I was backing it out, it galled. I tried to work it back and forth a number of times, and it was just then stuck, and I ended up breaking the tap off. So now I've got a tap in there, in that hole, and so that one's going to be not usable. In this case, I don't think it's going to be a big deal, and that's mainly because of where this bar is positioned. Because of its positioning, there's actually going to be some side braces right here. There is one bolt that's going to be in there, and it also is bolted to the floor. It is not weight-bearing on this spot, and the fact that the wheels are not going to be underneath it. So I think it'll be okay with just one bolt on this side, two on the other side, and then the bracing that's going to be right down here. So luckily, I don't think it's going to matter, but again, the moral of the story is don't get greedy with that. Work a little bit, back it back off, keep your tap clean, and uh, hopefully we won't have that problem anymore. I finished tapping the pieces that need to be threaded. Now we can put this together or start putting it together. But first I have to drill the holes in the pieces that'll be the ends that then the other parts will fit through. You can see here, the long pieces here, these will go and bolt in this way. To do that, I need to then drill holes. So I built this little jig. You can see this jig here. I drilled these holes to match up perfectly then with these here. See how it matches up. Now then all I have to do is put this jig where I need the holes drilled and then I can get a perfect set of holes each time without having to measure each time and put that together that way. Now on to drilling those parts. What I've done now here then is put this into the press and you can see when I tighten the jig up here it'll just make a perfect spot to drill those holes. Now I need to drill them on each end 
on all four of the sides here. The next step now is to make the button head cap screws fit then the holes that we just drilled all the way through. If you look here, when you put this in here, you can see it sits on top here. This is not where you want to bolt to because this is then just aluminum, you would smash that in. So we need to make this hole larger, then this fits all the way down inside there. And we're gonna use then just a step bit to do that. So step bit here, we're gonna make those holes a little larger there. See now how they fit then all the way in. That way they're holding on the thicker spot inside here, not on the thinner spot on the outside there. Next I have to drill a few more holes to mount some of the other pieces, in particular the vertical braces. One of the issues I'm going to have though, if you look here, these holes are drilled for then the cross brace here. These are where then the bolts would go. I can't put a bolt in here, so I can only put one in. So I'm going to have to add another brace in here to get two or a brace on the back side then to get something else to hold more structure here. In particular, I'm going to build some inside corner braces for junctions like this, where I want this to be movable. Since I'm not going to drill a hole here, this way this can be moved. I'm going to build a brace here. It's just one eighth, one inch L angle, and we'll drill holes in there to match up then and insert into here then the connectors. And that'll allow me to adjust this as time goes by. I'm also gonna drill holes for a mount this way. This is drilled out so I can have a piece going down, but then my vertical piece here needs to be attached also. I can't put a bolt through here because this is where the heads of the other bolt will be. I can right here. One option would be to inset it like so, and then I can put both bolts through here. Another option is to go ahead and bolt this one here, but then add a brace then on the outside or on the inside here. I haven't decided which one I'm gonna do. I'll see as it goes together, but I'm gonna at least get this hole drilled in these side pieces. I'm gonna make a few different parts, some different braces and connecting points. And you can buy these already pre-made from most of the companies or you can make your own. I'm just going to use some flat quarter inch, one, uh, one inch by quarter inch wide bar and some one by one eighth inch angled aluminum and turn them into connectors. So here's what they look like now and here's the connectors. Another way to make a connection between pieces with the slotted aluminum is by using a carriage bolt. If you look here you'll just see this is a carriage bolt. And with the slot, it fits into the slot, and then the carriage, the square part of it, is actually captured then in the slot. You can see how that slides right in there. And then you can bolt your piece to that. One of the problems I found, I bought a bunch of these at the hardware store. Some of them, unfortunately, are too wide to fit. So I'm going to have to use the sander to cut the edges down just a little bit, but they're just barely too big. Some of them fit fine, other ones a little too big. See, I just took a little off the two of the edges. Now it slides in there just the way it should. Behind me here now, I have everything cut, tapped, and put together enough that I'm ready to start assembly. All the different screws, bolts, things that I think I'll need. Also anti-seize, because we're working into aluminum with stainless steel bolts. <laughs> This is the base piece and I have it together now bolted together it's sitting up on two of the side rails from the top piece because you have to preload everything and that's one of the things to make sure you preload in other words these right here if you can see both of these are captured so to get those in there you have to preload them 
into the slot before you put it together. That's where the roll-ins come in handy. If you forget, you can always roll one in, but it's better or cheaper because the roll-ins are more expensive to put in ahead of time. I used a couple different types here just to show that different ways. The one where the bolt and the nut are, are the carriage bolt. The other one then is the slip-in or the T-nut style. But because this is going to have mounts or a bottom to it, I had to mount the bolts, see the carriage nuts, in there. Let's take a peek here at what I did with these corners. Again, a lot of these I tapped through and then bolted together. You can see here that this was tapped through. What that means then is I cannot bolt through here to tap into here because obviously there's bolts in the way. You can see this one's tapped in. So what I did then is I made this bracket here just out of one inch, quarter inch thick, one inch aluminum, tapped into here and then used the nut certs in there. Now we've got it put together. This is the basic cart. I have to then adjust these braces to hold the tires at the right height. Here there is going to be a floor on there so I want to make sure the tires don't drop too far down. So this is going to have to be moved which is the advantage of not drilling and tapping these but using an angle is that I can move this here. I have this actually turned upside down here now and I'm putting in some of the OSB that we're using for basically bottoms of storage bins. And then I'm also going to put on the floor, you can see there's the floor, painted black on the one side. For the floor, I'm actually, I've put in some carriage bolts, I'm going to use that. But I'm also going to use those self-tapping screws into the aluminum itself. See if we can stiffen the structure up a little also. Now I'm working on mounting the floor and then the wheels. Now you can see here, this is where the carriage bolt is that's going to mount the, what, this outer corner. But the problem becomes, I realize now, because this has an extra piece on it for the lock, this is going to be too short. Again, this is captured here, so now I have to pull this bracket off to put a longer carriage bolt in there to mount the wheel. Now the wheel is actually, it's all urethane. It looks like an air wheel, but it's not. It has a lock for swivel and then a lock itself. So I can lock the wheel into place when it's in the trailer to help hold it still, or if I have to tow it, I can lock two of the wheels and it will just steer them with with the front two or rear two depending on how you're pulling it and that way it won't want to wander all over if all four wheels are unlocked. So I have the floor on now and I'm mounting the wheels. This is the carriage bolt that was captured in the slot of the slotted aluminum and the reason is is because I cannot put a bolt through here because here's where the bolts are connecting the side piece. On this side here, what I'm going to do is, I've actually drilled a hole all the way through there, and again I'm going to use a carriage bolt. Now I didn't inset it in this side because the carriage bolt will actually then lock into, turn it over here, locks into place in there. And that'll hold that on nicely there. This one here I'll drill out with a smaller carriage bolt just holding into the OSB. All right, the pit cart is basically done here, as you can see. The only thing I really didn't get video of was making of this top. This is just a little piece of shelving, two foot wide, four foot long, that I bought, added a piano hinge, so that way we can make a drawer here out of this part here, and then obviously the shelf here that holds the little toolbox. But overall, I think it came out real well. 
I found working with the slotted aluminum or the extruded aluminum to be fairly easy. It's not much different than working with regular aluminum, except for instead of riveting pieces together, you're bolting them. Things that I did find with the threaded parts here, when I threaded that in there on both sides, obviously it limits what you can do as far as putting bolts through then in other spots. It also makes it to where you can't take it apart as easy to add things. So again, you need to pre-plan a lot of these where you load in um, fasteners and so forth. Having ones that are made out of angle iron that are in the middle obviously gives you some adjustability. But it, overall, it, it came out very nice. It's very sturdy. And you can see here, it holds all the things that I'm going to need, obviously, at the track. I've got two sets of tires. One will go on the car, and then we'll have a set for reins and a set for race tires. A very small toolbox, just a lot of little tools. This is just a little, enough tools just to work at the track. We're not going to do anything major. The idea behind this is not to run for any championships, anything like that. Just simple maintenance at the track. I've got awnings, two 10-foot awnings that I use to cover the pit cart and then where we sit. And then on this side, I have another set of tires, obviously, and then the 20 by 20, 20 by 10 awning, which covers the car. The only thing I don't have that I am going to add, I just haven't, I don't have it here. On the other pit cart, we had a very large nitrogen tank. This one will not fit that large of a nitrogen tank in that little spot there. I'm going to add a smaller nitrogen tank and then hang a hose off the side here. And that way we'll have nitrogen at the track. The doors here, or the little shelf here, it's only two inches tall. It will not hold a lot, but a tire gauge, simple things like that, nuts and bolts, things that won't go in the toolbox. But other than that, I think it came out very good. All right, just another update here. The cart's pretty much done. I've added a few things since we were doing the last videos. In particular, I added tie downs to these corners here. I've added then a metal angle. I welded up a little angle there. So that way it's attached on both sides to give it some strength. And then these tie downs here, that way I can tie those down. These are 400 pounds a piece working and 1200 braking. The cart itself is 400 pounds. That way it will handle each one. Each corner can handle the whole cart. But put them on all four corners. I added then eye hooks here. So that way we can strap the tires down. On each side. And then I just added using, again, just a roll-in type of quarter 20 fasteners. And then just added some eye bolts. So I have places to keep the tie downs. These are the ones that'll tie down the cart, and then when the wheels are off, I can hang those there, and so forth. And then compartments. The things that I don't have done is, the only two things is the latches here. I don't have the latches yet. They just haven't come in yet, but they're gonna be the same latches we're gonna use the van. Again, the idea behind this was not only to make me a pit cart, but to make something to test out the extruded aluminum and a lot of the parts we're going to use in the van. Then you can also see I added a small nitrogen tank, just enough to fill tires and so forth at the track. The other pit cart had a large nitrogen tank. We actually run air tools and so forth. This, I don't intend to do that. I just want to be able to maintain the tires at the track. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you learned something. I know I did. Got some experience with extruded aluminum. We're going to use it extensively in the new van build, all of the cabinet bases, the bed, all of the seating. We're going to use it as much as we can just because of the lightweight and sturdiness of it. I think this is a very sturdy product, um, very flexible, very versatile. Hopefully you join us for the van build and I'm sorry, I'm supposed to say, um, hope you like the content. Please subscribe and click the like button. Thank you.